Hello everybody, you're listening to Money Grows on Trees. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. Money Grows on Trees is a series of broadcasts that highlights certain portions of books that I have written or I'm currently writing that deal with the subject matter of money. For more information on broadcasts in this series and to get more broadcasts like this as well as broadcasts on a variety of different topics and subject matters kindly go to pastoralfred.com and make sure that you subscribe there you will get alerts whenever there are new broadcasts books movies cartoons music and so many other things that i have to offer tell your friends about pastoralfred.com and make sure they subscribe as well. Today I'd like to talk to you about obvious flaws. Let us open our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 25. I am reading from verse 1 down. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know ye not. Praise the Lord. You see, this portion of scripture that I read is very important. And you see, a lot of times, we have obvious flaws. Flaws that are obvious, but we ignore. These foolish virgins had an obvious flaw. They did not have enough oil. It was clear. Didn't they see that the wise virgins carried extra oil? Why didn't they see that if these other ones are preparing and making this pre- caution just in case the bridegroom is late let me also make that same precaution you see they saw the extra oil lamps but it was when things were too late and when it was clear that they will actually need extra oil that it dawned on them and then they asked and that was not the right thing to do they were now directed to go look for oil for themselves, to get their own oil. Why didn't they get their own oil when they saw that others were getting ready for the scenario where the bridegroom will be late? You see, so that was something that was obvious. A lot of times we have flaws that people can see from the outside. And those flaws prevent certain doors from opening for us as a matter of fact consciously and subconsciously you see there are things that we see on the outside that makes us analyze or classify people the same way and it is also the same way that people look at us and analyze and classify us based on such things for example when you see somebody that is fat It may not be the first thing in your mind, but subconsciously, and perhaps even consciously for some people, you see that this person is undisciplined. You see, so you have classified this person as somebody who is undisciplined, somebody who obviously 
cannot be trusted in a position where discipline is needed. Such people could, cannot be trusted with responsibilities. You see, one thing on the outside has led to a different conclusion that has now hindered their pro progress. Let us say that you are a boss in an organization and you are supposed to promote an employee. And out of the employees that are available, one of them is very fat. And you can see that even though all of them have the academic requirements and the know-how, that fat person has put himself in a position of his or her lack of discipline showing. You see, nobody will say it outside. Nobody will bring it up. But surely nobody gets fat and overweight that is disciplined. When that position that you are supposed to appoint an employee for is a position that demands great discipline. For example, let us say that it is taxing on the person. It requires dedication. You are not going to put that fat person there. And nobody will actually expect you to put that fat person there, even though nobody says it and it is not something that is written on the requirements. You see, this is an example of an obvious flaw. When we have obvious flaws in ourselves, we need to do all that we can to fix it. A lot of us go about our lives with our obvious flaws. We live our lives with it. You see, you have problems that can be seen on the outside and it is affecting how people see you and it is linking and highlighting problems that may not have anything to do on the surface with the original flaw. But the fact that that original obvious flaw is there means that you lack a certain virtue and your lack of that virtue means that you are unqualified for certain other things and you will not be put in so many different positions you see let us say that you are somebody who you really press your clothes as in you really iron your clothes whether you are well of it or not even if you are clean it has given you a certain look of irresponsibility you see, and it, even though nobody may ever talk to you about it, people will look at you and wonder, why is this person's clothes never ironed? That kind of thing would affect you. There are a lot of people who have been promoted in business just because they are smart dressers. They dress well. There are certain jobs that certain people will never get just because of this little matter of not ironing their clothes. You see, if you are a CEO of a corporation and you need to promote an employee into a position where they will meet dignitaries and they will meet people of quality, are you going to appoint somebody who may or may not iron their clothes? You are going to appoint somebody who is a smart dresser, who is a good talker. You see, somebody who is smart and social and good with words. You see, so that that person will establish the right business relationships and represent your company well. You would not put somebody who may or may not dress properly. Some people go to work without bathing. They just brush their teeth and spray cologne, you see. And all these things that people do, it matters. The way you interact with others, the way you carry yourself in the office with others. All these things are part of the reason why a lot of people are never getting promoted. They do not fit the lifestyle. They do not fit the other requirements that are never shown on paper that are required for that particular position. There is no way you can hire somebody to represent your company internationally when that person is terrible socially, in spite of how intelligent and knowledgeable about that field or profession that person is. And that is the truth of the matter. Somebody may have less knowledge, but because of how his social skills are, he knows how to interact with people, he knows 
how to get along, especially in high class society. If you do not know how to mingle, mingle and socialize in high class society, there's no point in you being invited to high class events because you will just bumble and make a fool of yourself and embarrass the company that you are representing. You see, so it is these kind of things that make certain people never get promoted. Some of them will go to church and pray, God give me a promotion, or they stay at home, they pray, Lord give me a promotion, give me a promotion. But you see, it's all these other things about you that people look at. And God is using me to tell you right now to change because most of these obvious flaws are things that you may have noticed, but you do not take seriously. You just overlooked like the foolish virgins. You saw that other people had extra oil. You, you just came with the oil that was already inside your lamp. You had no extra oil, you see? And at the end of the day, you had yourself to blame. Don't be that way. When you see flaws in yourself, when you see things about yourself that you need to fix, fix them. You see? If it is important for you and the kind of job you do for you to get a six pack, start working out and get a six pack. If it's important for you, depending on the kind of work you do, for you to dress with class, start dressing with class, take etiquette classes and know how to interact in that world. You see, because academic excellence and performance is wonderful, but all these other things hold a lot of weight when it comes to promotion and excelling in the business world. You see, in the business world, nobody asks you for how many PhDs you have and what college you went to. You see, those are questions that come up only when you are seeking a job. You see, best when you have the job, it is what I'm talking to you about now that matters. All those little things that make up who you are and how you present yourself. You see, those are the things that matter. Make sure you eliminate all those flaws. If you have poor social skills, make sure you work on that. Improve your social skills, your ability to interact with others. The range of these obvious flaws are wide, but there are things that you can often observe yourself. You often can notice bits. You don't think it's that serious or that important, but you see, it affects so much. Imagine the reason why you have not been promoted in your office being just because you do not frequently iron your clothes or sometimes perhaps you're a man and the work you do requires more physical activity but your shoes are often not very clean you may think that that has nothing to do with the job but someone who always cleans their shoes on the job when they notice that it is coughed or it has certain stains, that person is most likely going to be promoted than somebody who doesn't clean his shoes. Even though you, you all came to work with cleaned and polished shoes, but you see, you are the kind of person that during the course of your activity at work, dust here, dust here, somebody steps on it or whatever, and you don't care about cleaning it. That kind of thing, it may never be brought up. It will never be pointed out as a reason. As a matter of fact, the person who is analyzing you may never know that that is the reason. But you see, it's such little things that differentiates you from the person who is picked. You see. In fact, if we were to analyze the person who is going to decide who gets the promotion, if we were to analyze that person and ask, why did you choose this person over this? That person may never come to the conclusion that it is because this person's shoes is always shining. You see, but if your shoes were always shining, you will see that you may end up being the one who is picked for such positions of authority and promotion. That is the fact of the matter. 
So make up your mind not to be a foolish version. Don't be somebody who sees obvious flaws in yourself and think of them as little things and ignores them because those things have a lot of weight in deciding your progress and your promotion. So that is it for today. I would like to say a prayer for all of you who are listening. In the name of Jesus, I command every sickness to leave your body. I command every pain and every disease to leave your body. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command every demon under the sound of my voice to leave everyone that they are around or inside right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command them to leave their bodies. They are gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That prayer has been answered. We would like to hear from you, and we would like you to tell us what God has done for you. So kindly go to pastoralfred.com and tell us what God has done for you. Also, if you are listening to this broadcast and you've not given your life to Christ, or you've not received the gift of the Holy Spirit, go to pastoralfred.com and click on the salvation prayer link in the main menu. When you click that link, say those prayers and follow the instructions there. It is very important that you give your life to Christ and that you also receive the Holy Spirit. It's also important that you join a fellowship where you grow in the world and in your knowledge of God. So that is it for me today. Thank you and God bless you.